this lecture, we're going to be installing Docker followed by Node-RED on our PLC next. Before we do that, however, there's going to be a few details that we need to take care of. The first item on our list is managing the SD card. And as we looked on the WBM, there's going to be a section that is called SD card. What we need to do is navigate to the section and make sure that the external SD card is in fact enabled. The reason for that is that the Docker installation is going to require the space of an external SD card. So make sure to purchase a two gigabyte or larger SD card for your PLC next before proceeding with the step and make sure that the SD card is in fact activated. If it is not, make sure to check the box right here and hit on apply, which will then reboot your system. The next item that we need to take care of is going to be the IP address of our system. If we navigate into configuration network tab, we'll notice that we still have the default IP address, which is 192.168.1.10, but this IP address does not allow the PLC next to go out on the open network, unless there's going to be a router that's going to be configured to route that specific IP address onto the open web. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be giving this an IP address that's going to correspond to my own network that comes in from my internet service provider. Now, this setting is going to be 100% different in your situation, and I recommend that you look on your router specifications in order to find the IP address that's going to be usable for you. In my case, that IP address is going to be 10.0.0.201. So what I can do here is type that in 10.0.0.201. As you can see, I've already used it in a previous test. What's also important is to, is to set the default gateway because that's going to be routing our packets to the web and allow us to download Docker as well as some of the other libraries for Node-RED through our PLC Next. So I'm going to change those settings as you can see here. Like I've mentioned a couple of times now, those are going to be different in your situation. And I recommend that you read the specification of your specific router before proceeding with the change. That being said, what I'm going to do is hit apply and reboot. So you'll notice in the address bar, I'm at the new IP address and I can use the same credentials as we had before to log into my PLC. I did have to move the ethernet cable to my router in order to make this connection. That being said, I can enter the exact same credentials and log into the console. All that's really changed is the IP address of my PLC next. And now this allows me to go on the web, which we'll see in just a moment and download Docker as well as Node-RED. To connect to our PLC next, we're going to use PuTTY, a very common SSH application that allows you to connect to a lot of the Linux based devices. So what I'm going to need is a host name, which is going to be the IP address that we've just created. So 10.0.0.201. And we're going to keep this on port 22. We're going to open the connection, get a warning, which we're going to accept. And we are going to be prompted for the login information that's going to be the exact same as we've entered on our PLC. So log in as admin and the password is going to be the same one that is once again listed on your specific device. Press on enter and we will be logged in as admin. Now, what we need to do is we need to change and create a root password. So what I'm going to type in here first is sudo password root. And this is going to request the password once again to be entered. So in my case, I'm going to enter what's on the device. And then I'm going to be prompted to enter a new password. So this is going to be for the root username. So a different password than on the device. And this is something that you need to be remembering once you set it for the root account. As you can see, in my case, it has been created successfully. So I now have a new root user for my PLC next. Since we are still logged in as admin, what we need to do is log in as root by typing in SU, pressing on enter. It's going to request the password that we've just created. And once logged in, it should tell you that you are logged in as the root user in the PLC next folder. To make sure that our connection is established to the internet, which will allow us to download the software, we need to type in pinggoogle.com. As you can see above, I've tried an unsuccessful attempt by typing in HTTP, so there's no need to that 
suffix, type in pinggoogle.com and you should see the responses. If there are no responses, it means that your network settings of the PLC Next and or your gateway that allows it to go into your internet service provider is not correct. To cancel out of this, we're going to press Control C and we will be brought back to the initial menu. We can then synchronize the clock by typing in the following command. So I'm just pasting this in. We're then going to install Docker by running a series of commands provided by PLC Next. So these commands are copy pasted from the Git repository that we can clone. And so what I'm going to do is simply go through the sequence of commands. So the first one is the cloning of the repository. At this point, we should have that directory. So we can type in change directory docker underscore getting started, press on enter. We can then type in chmod c 777 setup.sh, press on enter. And then we type in dot slash setup dot sh. We're going to get the question of installing Balena engine or Docker. We're going to type in to press on enter, type in yes. Once Docker is installed, we can pull the official node red distribution by using the following command. One thing that I do want to emphasize is that you do not need to memorize these commands. This is something that we will provide in the next lecture in text format. So you can simply navigate there and read all these commands in order to proceed with the installation. You'll notice that once the installation completes and is successful, you're going to get a notice that says server now running at the IP address and then 1880, which is the port. Now, if we go back, we can close down putty or minimize it for now and open a new window. So I can navigate to 10.0.0.201, which was the IP address that I had set. And then I can put in a column and 1880 in order to open my node red. Now, this isn't going to be a course on how to set up node red, how to configure the different flows. That's going to be covered in the advanced section in which we're going to look at how to send some of the OPC UA tags from our PLC next into MQTT using a broker. That being said, node red is currently running on our PLC next. And if you want to read more about node red, why you should be adopting this technology, you can certainly research them and then understand the different capabilities provided. Mm -hmm.